The triangle inequality theorem tells us that the absolute value of the sum of two real numbers is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of those real numbers. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving the reverse triangle inequality theorem, which is also sometimes useful. This tells us that the absolute value of the difference of two real numbers is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the difference of those numbers' absolute values. Both of these results also hold for elements of any ordered field, not just the real numbers. For this proof, we'll be using the triangle inequality theorem, and we'll be using this useful result as well. This result just tells us that to prove the absolute value of a number, say a, is less than or equal to some other number, say b, we just have to show that a is between b and negative b. So that's how we'll tackle this proof. In order to show that the absolute value of the difference of the absolute value of x and the absolute value of y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y, we'll just show that the absolute value of x x minus the absolute value of y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y, and then we'll show that the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to negative absolute value of x minus y. Then, by this theorem we mentioned just a minute ago, we will have proven our desired result. I'll leave links in the description to proofs of both of these results that we're using in this proof. All right, let's get to it. These are the two inequalities we need to prove. Let's begin by proving this one. The absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y. To do this, we'll use a clever application of the triangle inequality theorem. Let's say we let m equal x minus y, and perhaps we let n equal y. Then, if we apply the triangle inequality theorem to the absolute value of m plus n, that would tell us that the absolute value of m plus n is less than or equal to the absolute value of m plus the absolute value of n. But that, of course, means that the absolute value of x minus y, which is m, plus y, which is n, is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y, again, that's m, plus the absolute value of y, again, that's n. The reason we did that is now here on the left, the minus y and plus y will cancel out, leaving us with absolute value of x, and then on the right side, we were able to get the absolute value of x minus y and the absolute value of y. So we've got all the terms we need, now we just need to do some rearranging. So now all we'll do is notice minus y plus y is zero, so we've got the absolute value of x on the left side of the inequality, and let's also subtract the absolute value of y from both sides. So now on the left, we have the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is less than or equal to, all that's left on the right is the absolute value of x minus y. And so we have accomplished our first mission, proving that the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y. Now, all that remains for us to prove is that the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to negative absolute value of x minus y. And then, again, by this result, we will have proved the reverse triangle inequality. Now remember, for the previous part of the proof, we let m equal x minus y, and we let n equal y, and then applied the triangle inequality theorem. But this inequality is kind of like our previous one, with a couple things flipped around. For starters, we have greater than or equal to instead of less than or equal to, and we've got the opposite of the absolute value of x minus y instead of just the absolute value of x minus y. So maybe, instead of having m equals x minus y, let's multiply it by negative 1, and try setting m equal to y minus x. Then, perhaps we'll have to set n equal to x so that everything works out similarly to last time. 
Now again, we would just apply the triangle inequality theorem to the absolute value of m plus n to get us that's less than or equal to the absolute value of m plus the absolute value of n. Then by substitution, this means the absolute value of y minus x, that's m, plus n, which is equal to x, that has to be less than or equal to the absolute value of m, which is y minus x, plus the absolute value of n, which is x. And now things will work out nicely, just like they did before. We've got negative x plus x, those add to zero, so we can just get rid of those and move everything over to the left. And now we want to get the absolute value of y minus x onto the left side of the inequality. And we want to get the absolute value of y over to the right side of the inequality. So let's subtract the absolute value of y from both sides. Then on the right side of the inequality, we'll have the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y just like we want, and let's subtract the absolute value of y minus x from both sides, so what we have on the other side is negative absolute value of y minus x. I might have made that sound more confusing than it needed to. All we did was subtract the absolute value of y from both sides and the absolute value of y minus x from both sides. Then I just wrote the bigger side of the inequality on the left and the smaller side on the right. Now we're very close to what we want. We have absolute value of x minus absolute value of y is greater than or equal to negative absolute value of y minus x. We want greater than or equal to negative absolute value of x minus y. Thankfully, you may recall the order of subtraction of two terms does not matter within an absolute value. So we can just change this to x minus y. And remember, that's because the only difference between x minus y and y minus x is, well, they could both be equal to zero, in which case, of course, they're equal. But if they're not equal to zero, one of them is negative and one of them is positive. The absolute value will make the negative one positive and won't change the positive one. So it doesn't matter what order the subtraction is written within the absolute value bars. And so we have proven the second thing we wanted to prove, that the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to negative absolute value of x minus y. And now we can apply this result. If thing one is less than or equal to thing two, and thing one is greater than or equal to negative thing two, then the absolute value of thing one is less than or equal to thing two. I encourage you to pick a couple real numbers and see some examples of the reverse triangle inequality in action. And that's how you prove the reverse triangle inequality theorem. Again, I'll leave links in the description to a proof of the triangle inequality theorem and to a proof of this absolute value inequality implication. Hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.